It's like a double bind. It's like an occult mind control thing. They tell yeah. you you're supposed yeah. to have half. Just, you're, you're, you're supposed, supposed to have half of this on your quest of life. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, and if you don't, there's a problem with you. You, you got sin in your life or some, some curses on you or something. Exactly. So a lot of people that are influenced are actually in the Word of Faith movement are really helped out by those testimonies. And there's all kinds of resources there. There's like almost 900 posts, I think. And uh, it's been my uh, it's my popular website, most popular website. I've yeah. uh, probably posted uh, ten times in the last two years, and still get about 400 hits a day. Hmm. Yeah. I. I. I uh it was very, it was very, uh, it caught my attention uh, because that's kind of sort of my background. I came from a um, Kojic slash charismatic slash word of faith type of background. So it caught my attention and um, and um, that's how I got a hold of you. Now, I just found out recently that you were actually, you're, you're a student of, of, uh, of Islam. How did that come about? Well, uh, let me start out. Is that I've, because I have Mormons, Mormons, Pentecostals, Word of Faith movement, and Bible missionaries in my family, I have always had an interest in studying religions and Christian cults specifically. Mm. And uh, I, in 85, I had an accident, was dead, and was brought back by an angel, and so I started looking into all the religions, and I had read all all the comparative religion books at the library, and uh, then uh, I was studying the occult, and I never did get far enough into Islam to realize the uh, occultic roots of Islam. And then, so before 911, uh, I was uh, working an EV shift, and they had a, a commercial for a free Quran. So I got it and I read it. I thought, no, oh, man, there's there's violent verses in here, and there's peaceful verses in here, and I didn't know what to think of it. And after 911, I read it, uh, read the Quran for a second time, <laughs> and uh, I noticed uh, a verse that talked about abrogation that that yeah. some verses abrogated or negated yeah. the other verses, but I didn't know. Uh, which ones ab uh, abrogated which ones and I bought into the line that Islam had just been hijacked by a few individuals and I was a I was a 911 truther at one time and so then on 9 two years ago in a few days I visited a friend's political blog at uh, religiopoliticaltalk.com and he had the story of Terry Jones hey, uh, hey David hold on a second man hold on um, okay, I, 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 because I like my my eyes to be uh, informed. I, that word you use, I want you. Can you explain? I know you and I know what it means, but I want you to explain that word abrogated. That that term abrogated, so that we understand what what that means. That means that means that it's replaced by an earlier version, in kind of the same sense, like the Old Testament is abrogated by the New. Right. Yeah, it's not really the same. It just means that. That uh, one of the verses goes something like, um, this is a paraphrase, yeah, Allah's giving you certain truths, but he brings you new and better truths. Mm -hmm. Instead of, instead of uh, Muhammad saying that he was wrong, or that Allah was wrong, he just said that, hey, what we had was true at the time, what Allah gave was true at the time, but right. now he's brought something new that's truer, and the latter ones are meant to be followed throughout all eternity, and those are the violent totalitarian verses. I can read you a couple of them right now if you would like that would probably shock you and the rest of the audience. We'll go right ahead. My, well, my, uh, my computer, I'm outside and it kind of uh, locks up a little bit. I have to put it into sleep mode and get it to crank back up to uh, to get my uh, uh, mouse moving so it will be just a second longer mm -hmm. until this word, word off my hand. There's Four verses in the Quran and one in the Hadith that together I call Islam in a buddy nutshell. It's uh, Quran uh, 929, and this is one of the uh, important things to understand about the Quran is it's not in chronological order. It's yeah. arranged from the shortest to the longest in chapters. And so yeah. this verse here, 929, rules out just about every other 
uh, verse, peaceful verse, and there's specific verses that the Tafsir, which is the Muslim scholars, and the Hadith says that this verse overrules. It's uh, Quran 929. Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, even if they are of the people of the book, the people of the book as Christians and Jews, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and fill themselves through. And then in the uh, Quran 8.39 it says, Fight them until all opposition ends and all submit to Allah. Quran 8, uh, I don't have the, the uh, first reference right, but the next one I have listed here says, So fight them until there is no more fitna, which is disbelief or non-Muslims, right. and all submit to the religion of Allah alone in the whole world. Yeah. Then uh, Bukhari, uh, which is the Hadith, uh, there's a the Islamic trilogy, which is the Quran, the Hadith, which is the sayings and traditions of Muhammad, and the Nasir, which is the Islamic biographies right. of, uh, of uh, Muhammad. And Bukhari is one of the most authoritative collections of Hadith there is. And in Bukhari 8, uh, 3, uh, 87, it says, Well, Allah's apostle said, I have been ordered to fight the people. Now, they say, every, when it's people, that means everybody except Muslims. Till they say, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And then in the Quran, Allah states the specific purpose of Islam in Quran 48, 28. And he says, he it is who has sent his messenger with guidance and religion of truth, that he may cause it to pre prevail over all other religions. Yeah. And so that's basically the totalitarian nature and the bloody nature of Islam in just a few verses. Right, right, right. Now, one of the things, one of the things, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later. But uh, um, because you know, we're, we're a lot. Maybe, maybe some of our audience don't understand uh, that that the uh, the Muslims are are bound by their religion to a caliphate, and we're going to we talk about caliphate on this show. We haven't talked about it in a while, but um, and you know what the caliphate is. But um, one of the one of the central um, beliefs of of the Muslim is what they believe about God, and um, once you um, oh, and let's talk about let's talk about the because you know they claim to share Christian heritage, right? It's not not true at all. It's actually a direct polemic, which means uh, an aggressive argument or offensive attack against Christianity. Okay. It's yeah. not. It's not a Christian cult. As some think, it's not in the Abrahamic religion family of Judaism and Christian and Christianity. Mm -hmm. It is a false, te uh, a false teaching, a false world religion that but, is uh, totally different from Christianity and Judaism. Right. And, and it's, it's it's more like a cult than anything else. But it's really a totalitarian political ideology cloaked in yeah. religion. Yeah. There's like something like 500 verses that command Muslims uh, to uh, fight against the unbelievers. Yeah. Uh, well, it's infidels. The infidels. Yeah, it's, it's, it's infidels. A Muslim is an infidel and deserves to be either. Well, see, this is what a lot of people don't understand. The, 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 way that, the way that the Muslim nation rose is their, their, their mantra was was submit to Allah or die. This, this is how they this is how they grew. This is how Muhammad grew the nation of Islam. And and, and that is still in their beliefs. It, it's a little more it, it and it's rising up and becoming more prevalent. So this is why we Bible believing Christians should be concerned about this because what's gonna happen to us if what's happening in North Africa and what's happening in in, uh, um, in Europe and in the Eastern Hemisphere is taking place with, in Iran with Iran and, I, and Israel if what's going to happen over there and even you know we can talk about this all day because we can talk about the associations of the United States government with with the Muslim Brotherhood and all the other things that go along with that what's going to happen if if the the Muslim Brotherhood um, 
get control of the Eastern Hemisphere? What's going to happen to us as Christians? What? Well, uh, they, they're going to cut our, our heads off, you know. The Revelation tells us that there will be a time when people will put you to death and there's other references to beheading and they'll think that they're doing God a favor. I got a question. I'm sorry to cut you off, but have you seen, have you seen the videos of them, uh, of the Muslims cutting cutting Christians' heads off, cutting people who, who convert well, Muslims to Christian. When you cut me off of my little testimony, I was almost through with earlier, I was fixing to get to that because that's why I study Islam now. I'm it's sorry. Because what, what happened whenever I, um, whenever I found out about Terry Jones' burnt Quran day, uh -huh. I went to his page and he had a shirt that said Islam is of the devil. So I sent him a nasty letter telling him he was a bigot and an Islamophobe and all this stuff. And then I went to his Facebook site for the Burner Quran Day, and then I went to two Facebook sites for against the Burner Quran Day. And for five days, this is what I heard. We'll kill you all if you burn our Quran. And all the non-Muslims were saying, not if we kill you all first. And then they started posting pictures of Muslims cutting people's heads off, burning them alive, throwing acid on their face, cutting heads, ba babies' heads off. Uh, just totally horrendous things. I knew that a few of these videos existed, but I had no idea that there's actually hundreds of them out there if you know where to find them at. So that day, I, for five days, I was in those rooms, and then uh, I, one day whenever I woke up, it dawned on me that all the so-called moderate Muslims, none of them thoroughly denounced those atrocious acts that those videos were displaying without also half-heartedly agreeing with them. Mm -hmm. And so it dawned on me that there was no, uh, if there is such a thing as a moderate Muslim, which there is, uh, modern Muslims, which they're secular Muslims, non-religious, but there is no modern Islam. But I woke up to the realization that uh, there was not, the religion hadn't been hijacked by a few extremists, that the religion itself is extreme. That's right. And so uh, I... I I, I dedicate the rest of my life to studying and, and exposing this one. Awesome, awesome. And uh, we're, gonna, we're going to um, um, continue to spread this message. we we got a break coming up, Damon. Uh, we're going to yeah. continue with you. Uh, we're going to continue with you. We're going to talk a little bit more about the actual doctrine of, of the Muslims. We're going to continue that. we got a break coming up. Hey. Brothers and sisters, stay with us. We're going to continue this new Real Talk Radio. We'll be right back. You all right over there? You seem like you're having some difficulty. You sure? Yes. Can you pull your team closer? You know, because I can't hear you. That's better. Can you speak up now? You hear me now? Yes. Okay. And we are also, um, thank you for, for uh, uh, being back with us. Brothers and sisters, we are joined by our special guest, Damon uh, Whitsell. Um, and we are talking about the subject, kicking off the month of September with the subject, false doctrines, cults, and world religions. Uh, Damon, I, I was, was talking about, um, before the break, I was talking about how, um, uh, they, they, uh, the, the Muslims have, um, of course, like, uh, we have our beliefs, which are centered in the Bible. Um, they have their beliefs that, which are centered in the Quran. Um, and my, my, my premise about false doctrine is this, is, is one of the areas that they always get wrong is they, they, it starts with, it starts with a um, twisted, um, a twisted version of who God is. Definitely. And, and, and that, that, that and denying of grace is all calls for salvation by works instead of grace. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so and so are there elements of that in the Muslim faith? 
Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, the Bible talks about that Jesus Christ, or God, loves everyone. He commands us to love our enemies. Jesus Christ, uh, Allah, says that he hates everyone except for Muslims. Uh, that uh, Muslims are the best of creatures and non-Muslims are the worst of creatures. Hmm. It's a whole system of apartheid where everybody under Sharia law that lives in a Muslim country